Hi everyone, in this video I'll give you a brief overview of eating disorders and specifically anorexia and bulimia. So let's start with anorexia. It is mostly associated with female patients and affects teens and young adults for the most part. The preoccupation is with being thin and in terms of the diagnosis, the specific four diagnostic criteria. Number one, low body weight with a BMI of less than 18.5. Self-induced weight loss, whether through eating less, over-exercising, or um, using laxatives. There's an overt value of idea of being fat or seeing themselves as being too fat. And key aspects of anorexia is endocrine disturbances. So there's a disturbance in the HPA axis, which results in amenorrhea, raised cortisol. In terms of the physical features, you get fatigue languid body hair, and delayed puberty, amongst others. In terms of investigations, other than the physical features, you would see high Cs on UNEs. So you would see elevated cortisol, cholesterol, and beta-carotene. Your glucose will be low, and your cholesterol will be high. And on an ECG, you would see bradycardia and QT prolongation. Now, you can also perform something called a squat test, where you ask the patient to sit on the floor and squat on the floor and try and get up without using their hands. And if they're not able to do it, the squat test is positive and indicates muscle atrophy. In terms of management, it is based on the age of the patient. But for those underage, you would use anorexia-based family therapy. And for adults, you would do something called CBTED or cognitive behavioral therapy, focusing on eating disorders or MANTRA, which is the Maudsley model of anorexia nervosa treatment for adults. There's poor prognostic factors associated with anorexia, and these include long duration of the disease, being male, and an onset of 17 or pre-pubertally. Now let's move on to bulimia. It is characterized by episodes of binge eating followed by purging. The clinical presentation is binge eating, counteracting weight gain through means such as vomiting, laxatives or exercise, strong uncontrolled food cravings during the episodes, and again the overvalued idea seeing themselves as too fat or uh, having a very low target weight. But crucially, patients who suffer from bulimia do not have to be underweight. In terms of the physical features, you can see dental erosion from repeated vomiting, parotid gland swelling, again, due to the irritation from the acid from the stomach, and Russell signs, which is scarring on fingers from induced vomiting usually seen around the knuckles. In terms of the investigations, your user needs would show you hypokalemia, hyponatremia and hypomagnesemia, so everything would be low. Your ECG would show a prolonged PR wave and an inverted T wave, which is due to the low potassium levels. Your ABG would show metabolic alkalosis due to the loss of the acid from the stomach uh, during repeated induced vomiting. In terms of the management, again, for those underage, you would go for th family therapy or cognitive behavioral therapy, and for adults, the self-help and cognitive behavioral therapy. In terms of the complications, the main one is contractional alkalosis, where a patient may experience tremors, confusion, and muscle twitching, amongst others as well as tetany. This was a very brief overview of eating disorders. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. And that, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you consider subscribing.